Welcome to Unique Academy's YouTube channel. I am Vishwas Nimbalkar and you are watching In-Depth Series. In today's session, we are going to look into the Supreme Court Collegium. So let's see, first of all, why this was in particularly uh, in news. So we all know that we have a Chief Justice of India named N.V. Ramanna and his tenure is getting over. And even he has appointed Justice U. U. Lalit as his successor. So the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramanna's tenure is drawing to an end in a few days. So that is basically the news that we know. The Ramanna Collegium, now he being the Chief Justice of India, so he is also the head of the Collegium. What is Collegium? We will look into what it is as we move ahead. But he is the head. As he is Chief Justice of India, he is going to be the head of everything related to the judiciary in India. That is for sure. So the, so, so the name is given like Ramanna Collegium has been particularly successful. So this is achievement. So this news is basically about the NV uh, Justice Ramanna's achievement as achievement in the collegium system and collegium system in simplest terms if I have to tell you it is what it is regarding the appointment of appointment of judges of Supreme Court and High Court both okay so remember so in simplest terms how the judges of the Supreme Court and High Court are appointed, they are appointed by the President. But before that, there is some procedure and that procedure is basically called as a collegium system. So over here, the Chief Justice who is going to get retired in coming uh, in few days, his collegium was very successful and uh, looking in, in the appointments and all those things. So that was particularly the news that appeared in yesterday's newspaper. So yeah, this collegium particularly, it met frequently and working quickly. So it was meeting uh, regularly and it was also working quickly so it was basically we can say an efficient system it was efficient one they took the perennial problems of judicial vacancy by its horns and turned it into around so see judicial vacancy is a very big problem and because of judicial vacancy what is happening there is delay in justice delay in justice and we all know the know the saying justice delayed is justice denied so if the judges are not there then who is going to preside over the case and if the case is not going to get presided then how the justice is going to get delivered so that is a very important point so over here what this collegium which was headed by justice nv ramanna they met frequently they were efficient and they made it uh, norm that the judicial vacancy should be fulfilled timely so that is basically the news all about so the collegium as an as a united front was able to recommend numerous judicial appointments and scripted history by getting nine supreme court judges appointed in one go so if you remember few year, few days back few months back they had appointed nine judges in one go so that is significant achievement for the collegium system and collegium system again repetition is headed by the chief justice of india so and in and in and in one of that cases even one of the ladies justice b v nagaratna is in line to be the first woman CJ in 2027. So by that time, we can have even the first first woman chief justice of India. So that, that is again a very significant one. So overall, we can say this news that we are studying today is basically about the achievements of chief justice of India and V. Ramanna in the collegium system. And that's why we are studying this particular topic. So let's move ahead and let's see what is collegium system. So collegium system, see again, it is neither constitutional, it is neither statutory, it is not legal or and that, that does not mean it is even illegal. But there is something very important that you should know. In India or in any other country, judiciary, when it comes to the separation of power kind of thing, then independence of judiciary, independence of judiciary, is very important. So this collegium system also originated from this particular notion that the judiciary should be independent because and see if we take the India's example also in India who is the enforcer of the fundamental rights it is the judiciary either the high courts or the supreme court by article 32 or by article 226 you can file the writ petitions in the directly in the supreme court or in the high court so independence so and so in that way 
these judges play a very significant role in maintaining the core of the democratic principles of the constitutionalism and that's why this judiciary should be independent so the collegium system is outcome or of that basic tenant of independence of judiciary so let's look into the technical part of that it is a system in which a chief justice cji plus four other judges so overall we can say five judges so four most senior judges of the supreme court decides on appointments and transfer of supreme court judges so see uh, transfers of supreme court judges will not happen because we have only one basically uh, bench of the supreme court generally appointment is going to happen but the transfer of judges of the high courts can happen so transfer why the word transfer is used it is not used in the case of the supreme court but it is used in the case of mostly in the case of the high courts basically so remember chief justice four other judges they are sitting together and they they form the collegium basically the four judges over here means the senior most so once the chief justice he is the senior most and then below him who are the senior most according to whenever they were appointed and their seniority and all those things they will be making the collegium system as such now indian law does not allow for it now there that's what i told you this body of collegium system it is neither constitutional body or neither there is any law which creates a collegium as such but basically because of certain cases and because of to maintain the independence of judiciary the collegium system was maintained and there is also an ambiguity in the indian constitution it is regarding the ambiguity about appointment of judges and what is that article 124 of the indian constitution speaks about appointment of judges of the supreme court where he states that the judges of the supreme court shall be appointed by the president of india in consultation with the chief justice of india so the issue arose whether the issue arose on that consultation first issue was is, is the consultation always necessary then second issue was if it is necessary is it mandatory that the consultation should be followed and then there was presidential reference so i am just giving you a brief summary we'll come to that point also so it is not allowed by the law so it is not a legal institution as such okay understand it is not an institution it is not like appointing it's not like upsc or it's not like any department of personal and training it is just judiciary is its own creation for the appointment and why a very important independence of the judiciary when it comes to appointing and transferring judges the judiciary should be given precedence over the executive branch of government yes obviously independence of judiciary is the basic tenant of separation of power in separation of power we have judiciary executive and legislature legislature obviously they cannot interfere into judiciary because judi and executive also now if executive tomorrow starts to decide about the judiciary then how we can expect the judiciary to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens because it is more majority of the times it is the executive who violates the fundamental rights of the people right so the rights of the people if they have to be protected then what you have to do you have to actually give precedence to the judiciary than that of the executive and that is what is done so yes there is a president who is the head of the india or he is the executive head of the india so he is appointing the judges but he is upon but while appointing the judges what is the procedure that is appointing what is the procedure that he is following that needs to be seen over here getting so remember why the precedence has to be given the point is not about precedence is given why it is given simply because executive cannot have that right if executive is tomorrow deciding upon deciding on appointing the judges or uh, about transfer of judges and all those things then in that case what is the uh, thing in that case it will be the uh, violations of the independence of judiciary itself executive will decide on the judges who favor them they will not go for the judges who are going to go against them so it is very simple as uh, as simple as that right further during the 1970s uh, now this is just a historical uh, background of this collegium system during the 1970s tensions between the judiciary and executive branch were exacerbated by instances of court packing a court packing is what it is a practice of altering the makeup of the court benches so see uh let's say xyz case is there and then in the xyz case is to be decided by three judges judges a b c but now what is it a b c now i know a is pro government 
B and C are against the government or they are rather than saying pro-government or against the government, we can say A is pro-government, B and C are like they follow the constitution only. So the government now here is scary that okay, if I am going to have a BNC, then uh, BNC may give the judgment against me. So what I will do, I will try to influence and try to remove this BNC and I will try to find some CND who will be or a DLE, sorry, DND who will be favoring me. So I will get the, I will shift the benches. So that is court packing, getting the point. Then wholesale replacement of the judges of the high courts. So judges of the high courts were replaced like anything and appointment of the two chief justices of India. Okay, just now see, there were judges. Now there is no mechanism that as to even today as who is to be appointed as a senior chief justice of India. Now chief justice of India, generally the convention is that the senior most person in the judiciary shall be appointed as the chief justice of India. But during 1970s, during the Indira Gandhi's government, the judges were so judges were given away their superiority and the junior judges were appointed as the chief justice of India. So that is not like, uh, that was not, cons we cannot say even it is unconstitutional because constitution does not state who should be appointed as the chief justice. But they violated the, violated what? The basic conventions, right? So, so everything cannot be written in the constitution. There has to be conventions for that. So the conventions were violated over here. Moving ahead, following a series of decisions, the evolution of collegium system began. So evolution of collegium system was not a one-day phenomenon. It basically began what is known as three judges cases. Three judges cases. And, and on the basis of these three judges cases, what we have, we have the collegium system. So first one, on judicial appointments and the transfer, the CJS recommendation might be rejected if there are cogent reasons. So see, article in the Indian constitution says what? The chief justice of the judges of the Supreme Court shall be appointed by the president of India in consultation with the chief justice of India. Now the question is very logical, is what does word in consultation mean? So if consultation, whether I should take the consultation Right. If I have to take the consultation, okay, you may say, I'm, I don't want to take your consultation. That is the thing. So now, now I decide, okay, I will take your consultation. But then again, the point is there. I am taking your consultation, but the point is that I may not follow your consultation. So in that case, what is going to happen? I will decide on my own only. And own, own means over who, 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 who is own over here? Here is the president and president we all know works on the who's advice he works on the advice of council of ministers and what is council of ministers it is the executive branch so on the executive only the judicial appointments will happen right so you cannot have allow, allow that to happen so here that was one thing i hope you are understanding it's a bit tricky but it's very simple if you try to understand it in that way for the next 12 years the executive will have precedence over the judiciary when it comes to appointing judges judges so cogent like judiciary was having its like uh, what you can say the president used to appoint the judges president on the advice of council of ministers prime ministers and the executives and all all those things they used to give the list to the president and president used to appoint them now in this case where is the independence of judiciary even though independence of judiciary later on in the keshwan and the bharti case was considered to be the basic structure doctrine but later it became later phenomenon right so that was the first one now, the collegium system was introduced in the second judges cases in the year 1993. The CJI will have to consult. So again, as I told you, the chief consultation, the word consultation was ambiguous. But here in this case, the Supreme Court decided the consultation is mandatory. The chief CJI must be consulted while appointing the judges of the Supreme Court. CGI will have to consult a collegium of two most senior judges in the highest court of judicial appointment. CJI plus two judges, senior most, for the judicial appointment and this is known as collective judgment, will take the precedence over any decisions made by the government. So if the government is deciding on X, Y, Z, A, B, C as the judges, these judges have to be approved by the team of CJI plus the two judges, this list will go to the government 
and then the government through president will appoint these people. So earlier this government which was having the precedence on deciding it, now these are CGI or the judiciary will be having a precedence on that. Right. So in 1993, we can say that was the real origin of the collegium system. But remember, it began before that. Even the question was raised even before that. And during the third judges cases of 1998, the Supreme Court extended the judicial collegium to include the CJN and four of his senior most judges. So to build up a larger consensus, what they did, they started to build it up. OK, so that is about the three judges cases and the collegium system. Now, what is the working mechanism of this particular system? Now, see, uh, whenever you appoint a judge, there will be, or even for UPSC, even if you are going into, there is always going to be some kind of background check, even in ITs and all those things. So here, the Intelligence Bureau can conduct an inquiry for the government if the judge is to be elevated to the High Court or Supreme Court position. So the Intelligence Bureau will do a background checkup on that particular person and when the collegium makes a decision it is possible to protest to it and ask for clarifications okay so that point is there if the names are returned to the government for the reconsideration the collegium has the power to veto the government so that is another power that is given to it Further, how are the appointments made basically? So the memorandum of procedures, like it is a way of procedure simply, governs the appointment of Chief Justice of India and Judges of Supreme Court. Clause 2 of Article 124, which I have always been stating, I have stated almost twice or thrice, of the Constitution allows the President to nominate the Chief Justice of India and Supreme Court judges. Even Chief Justice of India, Supreme Court judges, and even by another article, High Court judges are also included. This position should be filled by Supreme Court's most senior judge who is regarded suitable to hold it. A suggestion for this replacement is sought from the departing Chief Justice of India by the Union Law Minister. So if a Chief Justice is to be appointed, recently news also came that uh, the uh, Justice Raman Nash should advise who should be the his successor. So he advised Justice Yuyu Lalit to be the advisor of, uh, to be the Chief Justice of India, the next Chief Justice of India, because he is the senior most judge. Even though he may have a very small term, but still he is a senior one. So he had to get, he had to get that. So that is suggestion that is given by the Chief Justice of India to the government of India or the Union Law Ministry. Now, as soon as the CJI approves, the Law Minister sends the communication to the Prime Minister. So Law Minister, Law Ministry is receiving the recommendation from the judiciary or CGI, it will go to the law minister, law minister will send it to the prime minister and who in turn advises president, president on the appointment. Okay. So here this is, this word is by mistake. Now Supreme Court appointment of a judge, the collegium recommends a candidate to union minister when a vacancy is expected in the Supreme Court. Collegium members as well as the highest ranking judge from the high court to which the suggested person belongs are constituted, are consulted by the CGI. So whenever you are appointing even the high court judges, the CGI of Chief Justice of India will be consulted in that matter too. Every judge's view should be written down. Now, whenever you are appointing that, whatever the judge, if you are taking the names, let's say 15 names you are taking. So every judge's view, so whatever opinion, why he is appointed, why he is not appointed, should be written down and included in file provided to government by the collegium. So collegium will write it down why he should be there, why he should not be there. And other judges consulted. Having consulted non-judges, the CGI should create a memorandum of substance of such consultation which should in be included in the file. Further, Collegium's recommendations would be forwarded to PM for consideration by President who would make them final decision. And then we have finally, now all these issues are regarding the appointments of judges, but why do we require appointment of judges? Because timely appointment of judges will allow the timely delivery of justice. Because until and unless you have the judges, uh, you cannot have the 
you cannot have the decisions to be made okay right so judge if there are judges then the decisions will be given and then the simple logic justice delayed is justice denied justice is delayed because the, the basic infrastructure of a judge is lacking a judge, there are limited judges only and limited judges even if they decide like even if they decide thousand how many judges are there in supreme court right now 31 if 31 judges and how what is the pendency it is around 70000 or 50000 or 70000 between that even if they decide to take uh, every day how many cases they can take as an individual so that all needs to be looked into so over the years the number of judges has increased but th this has not resulted in decrease in the number of cases pending before the supreme court since 1950 errors have continued to rise despite periodic increase in the judicial power so initially there were very few judges but now there are more judges but still the cases are increasing and the pendency is increasing Although the court's judicial strength was boosted to 34 judges in August 2019, the number of pending cases has surged to 71,411 as of August 1 to 2022, up from little over 55,000 in 2017. So, see, in two years, almost we can say 15,000, 16,000 cases have increased. So that is the pendency in the Supreme Court. We are talking about Supreme Court, and what about what must be the case in the high courts? You can imagine, and only it can only be solved only when you have the judges, large number of judges. There were 64,426 cases in 2020, and 69,855 in 2021 in the backlog. Okay, they there are presently 31 judges on the bench. in the next few months four of the current judges including chief justice ramanna will be stepped down so again four new will be four will new will have to be appointed if they there is a if they if they are appointed not at time then obviously it will become a problem uh then his successor now the justice ramanna successor is justice yu yu lalit he will step down from bench uh, on november 8 after serving 3 months he, so he will be chief justice of india only for 3 years uh, because we know the age limit is 65 years and according to seniority rule justice d y chandrachud will become the 50th chief justice of india in the november so that is also the case so this is just a factual information now what are the arguments against the collegium system the first and simple argument against the collegium system is going to be it is not a legal body okay it has no secretariat or intelligence gathering structure for collecting and checking the personal and professional background of prospective nominees so how does when they appoint a judge how do they decide this person he this person has to be appointed how they do they have the mechanism to look into whether he was involved in any corruption charges whether he was involved in some illegal acts and all those thing they don't have anything like that they don't have secretariat they don't have that intelligence uh, gathering structures and all those things so they don't have anything that can that allows them to do the background checks which results in administrative burden when judges are appointed or transferred then nepotism and secrecy now nepotism and secrecy there was a very significant story made by the indian express few years back like how the judges of the high courts are appointed because someone is because of the nepotism only okay so generally in the high court appointment nepotism is seen and the secrecy secrecy is like on what basis they decide that this just this person has to be appointed and this person is not to be appointed have been cited as reasons for affairs failure to open to the public and then finally restrictions on selection of judges from the high courts for supreme court seats ignoring a number of highly qualified junior judges and advocates so these are all the arguments against the collegium system overall when we talk about the collegium system the most important point is that even though it may be illegal system there was but still we require an independence of judiciary there was one constitutional amendment done but then again it was struck down by the supreme court considering that it is a violation of independence of judiciary and that was national judicial appointments commission so njac this amendment was brought into the brought into but the supreme court said okay this committee whichever you have created this is violating the independence of judiciary in country like india where fundamental rights play a very significant role and the executive majority of the times who is uh, uh, always trying to be tyrant or ignorant of the law 
and when there is a high level of illiteracy when there is high levels of pils or judicial activism is seen then in that cases the independence of judiciary plays an important role and then independence of judiciary begins first by the appointments only so the appointment of judges is going to be the biggest thing that we have to see so that's it for today's session i hope you have understood whatever you have whatever we have discussed in this particular session so if you like if you like the video do press the like button do subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions do post it in the comment box that's it for the day see you in another one thank you